Welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. Have you been blinded by the God of this world? God is good and He's good all the time. He's worthy of all of our praise. Have we been seduced into believing a lie? Have we been beguiled by the serpent's sound? You know, we have this compassion for people that we need to give to God because the compassion that God has doesn't doesn't trick him, it doesn't fool him, it doesn't lull him into a sleep and make him not able to do the, the good things that he would do. But if we are in this world and we have feared anything, and even Psalm 23 comes back to my mind again, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil. Why? Because we know that he's with us. But if we have drawn back, if we have fallen into fear because we want it to protect somebody else with our own heart instead of by the power of God, if we've been around sin too long a time, then we ourselves get defiled by this thing. We forget that there's a table that God has put before us to eat from, and we don't eat from the table that he's put before us because we get wearied in our own minds. Hebrews chapter 12, right? Don't get wearied in your own minds. We're supposed to keep our eyes on Christ. In order to keep our eyes on Christ, we keep ourselves in the Word. And the Word, the Word will help us, will teach us, will lead us, keep our hearts and minds. It says in John 17 that when Jesus prayed, he, he said to keep us from evil, keep us from evil. Father, keep them from evil. And then we come to find out in the next verse that it's the word, it's the truth that keeps us from evil. And we have the Holy Spirit who's always speaking to us the truth. And when we receive that truth, we know God's will for our lives and we can step in his strength. The word gives us strength. The word gives us clarity. The word gives us life. And the word gives us peace. The word fights the enemy for us. That's that, that's that fight. We don't have to fight. You know what it says in Second Chronicles. That fight that, that we don't have to fight. That the Lord will fight for us if we would just be still and know that he is God. He's the strength of our lives, and even in the harder situations, He gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. But some of us might look in, like Stephen and, and say, I see heaven open, and the Son of Man standing right next to His right hand side, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Seeking somebody's salvation even unto our, de our death in this physical body. Yet, this physical body is no more than an earth suit that we're taking off. That's why we put on Christ today in our hearts, and we regard no evil thing in our eyes, in our ears. We don't want to be seduced by the blinder of this world, the, the God of this world who likes to blind the minds of men. We have to give ourselves completely to Christ, fall back in love with the one who loves us. That means casting out, kicking out everything in our heart and in our mind that we we know we can't handle. It. And even if we fake handle it, handle these situations in life on our own, listen, we don't win anything, anything in heaven. We'll get rewards in heaven because we because we did it in our own strength. We get rewards in heaven because, see, we sought him for every, for everything. We, we had him in mind in everything. He was always before us, the Lord Jesus, the Lord our Father of, of heaven and earth. We've got him before us in everything. We know that he's with us. And we don't want anyone else ruling us. Ruling our hearts in our mind, and ruling our soul. What was I thinking about now? The 
the Lord who is our light and our salvation, the Lord who is our, the strength of our lives. He so wants us for himself. <laughs> I was thinking that it was, the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. In all of these, we recognize who he is. And that's what we do today. We recognize in our situation who Christ is. Who the Almighty is. Before Jehoshaphat and them began to worship, they recognized who God is. And when the word of the Lord came to them, that word that we need to hear in our situation. Theirs was, you know, be still and know that I am God. You're not going to have to fight in this battle. I'm going to fight it for you. Hmm? This battle belongs to me. It doesn't belong to you. So they get their word from the Lord. They believe on that word from God. And they believe what the prophet said. You know, believe the Lord your God and he will establish you and believe the prophets and you will prosper. He did that. They did that. And then they danced before the Lord. So whatever our situation is for our children, for our husband, our wife, for the things that are happening in the world today, we put it before the God who can do anything. Because he can. Now our job is to keep ourselves unspotted from this world. This soul that we have is in this body, and it needs to be washed in the water of the Word. It needs to be recalibrated. <laughs> yeah, I think I said it right. I don't never know if I said that word right. But it needs to be recalculated. It needs to get a bath in the Word of God and, and be soaked in it and come out <laughs> clean, not wanting the things, the, not wanting the food from the God of this world. That is not impossible. All things are possible with God. And he's looking, he's wanting a bride that is pure, spotless, holy, separated from this world system. See, when we were born again, when we when we just said yes to God and, and, and yes to the Lord being our Lord we were to being taken out of Egypt out of sinful world it's we were being brought out we we're being brought out of darkness and brought into light you're in a whole new system but you can't sit on a middle line and have the world and the kingdom it doesn't work that way it's all or nothing it's all or nothing. We have to let go. When we, what was I saying now? When we were in this world, we were full of the nature of the world. We did it all on our own. That we did it in our own strength. And yes, we were burdened and we were greed. We had high blood pressure and we had a whole bunch of other things going on with us. And even today, as we are the children of God, if you're not, just say yes to Jesus. Say, Father God, I repent. I'm, I'm sorry for living a life without you. And I want you to be the head of my life. Jesus, be the head of my life. And Holy Spirit, come in and teach me what I need to know. Be in love with God. He's going to do it for you. That's how simple salvation is. It's letting go of the past and grabbing hold of your future. It's putting your hands in the future in the hand it's putting your life in the hands of the one who created everything. It's admitting that He exists. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, for those who come to him must believe that he is. And he will reward those who seek him. <laughs> you know, you come after him, you get peace, you get the peace that surpasses all understanding. You get the soul, you get the prosperity, the soul self, the, the, the prosperity, the health, and the soul prosperity. You get it all. You're whole, entire, and complete, and lacking nothing. The further you go into the knowledge of Him, by love, 
because that's how faith works. It works by love. <laughs> then, you know, your heart will be like ah, oh, you'll be in ah oh, with him, and all that other junk that you once struggled with is nothing to you anymore, and it's all being worked out. And what's not being worked out is being left behind. That's still working it out. It just wasn't good for you, so you gotta let it go. And it doesn't hurt so bad. God gives you, he, he gives you wisdom to know that even if it's a person that you're letting go of, God's working on that person too. The whole this, this Holy Spirit is in the world, convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And if we are in the way of somebody who's really hard-headed, then the Lord's going to move us out of the way. So don't worry about that person. Pray for them so that they would see the light of Christ. So that they would come into this beautiful salvation. It's more than I can express. It's more than I can say. But it's time out for sitting at this destroyer's table. The church has been asleep long enough, and we need to wake up and come into the house of our Lord. Come into the kingdom of God and sit down for real. That stuff that we've been feeding ourselves is nothing but garbage, and it blinds our minds. I'll read 2 Corinthians again, chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, his sneakiness, so the mind, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And it's fallen asleep because of the things that we engage in in our minds in this world. We have to take off this, take off this mind, and put on the mind of Christ. We have to do what it says in, in Isaiah chapter 55, when the Lord is saying, come to me. You know, he's, he's telling us to come to him. You know, I'm going to say something about Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1. It, you know, everyone who is thirsty, come ye to the waters and, and buy. He who has no money, come. Let me bring it over here. He says, "Why do you why come, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without price? Why do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in the fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live." And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. See, he did that through Jesus Christ. He's got an everlasting covenant with us. It, we don't, we're not, you know, spiritually, we cannot die. We're going to be with him forever. But the soul of ours needs to be washed in the water of the word. He says down here in verse 6, Seek, seek, seek ye the Lord, seek me. Wow. Seek him, let me say it the right way, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. You know, and I was thinking about that. When we call, when he says the wicked forsake his way and let the unrighteous man his thoughts. I kept on looking around like, where is that person at? You know, that's us. That's you. That's me. We are the unrighteous and wicked person. So don't stand up for yourself and say, no, nah, that's not me. I'm a child of God. I don't want to hear all that mess. We have been laying in a filthy pig pen, eating from the destroyer's table and not from the table of God. We've allowed our souls to become unpure and unholy by what, by what we're putting in our ears. We listen more to the God of this world, we trust more the God of this world than we do the God who created all things and in whom when we think about him, he has the power to send our soul into the lake of fire. See, it's not mankind that we ought to fear. It's not the devil that you ought to fear. It's the one who has the power over everything that he's created. 
So he says, come to me and forsake your thoughts, forsake your ways, take on my thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth a bud and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing that, that I sent it. It will prosper where he sent it, and he sent his word into our hearts, and he's writing it on our minds. He's putting his word in our hearts and in our minds. His perfect love is being poured out in us. He's given us an understanding. Isaiah chapter 11 talks about what the Holy Spirit is, what the Spirit of God is doing on the inside of us. If we would hear by the Spirit, if we would allow these, these, these physical things, these things that we're used to doing when we were in this world, if we would take this and bring it before the Lord so that He can mortify, this is what the Spirit of God does, He kills the deeds of the flesh. That motive why you do this or that. Or that thing that you do that, that is not beneficial for anybody. You know? He shows you how to kill it. How to destroy the works of the devil in you. It's not by might nor by power. It's by the Spirit of God. He's the one doing the work in us to give us the power to be strong. The power to be clean. If, if we lived in, in an unfallen world, we wouldn't, most of the stuff that we do that's, that, that grieves another person, we ourselves wouldn't be grieved. There'd be no pain, no hurt, no sorrow. There'd be no sin. Nothing but perfect love. We're in this world. Where if the love of God abides in you, then the love of God, it kicks out fear. See, but this is recognizing him all the time. It's knowing and putting him first all the time. Our heart is open before him and we understand that he is. And we praise him continually, night and day. This is not a work. It's not grievous. There's nothing grieving about the word of God. Nothing too heavy and nothing too hard. Unless there's a temptation in you to live outside of him. And while there may be, I, I, come, I bind that in the name of Jesus Christ so that you can know what it's like to live in the absolute love of God without fear, without adultery, without pornography, without, you know, lust of the eye, the lust of the, the flesh and the pride of life. I, I want you to know what it's like to live with pure, full purity. You think that, you know, there's a lot of people that say that that, that, you know, I don't want to have a goody-goody life. This isn't about what you think is goody-goody. Good, good is going bowling. It's, it's learning how to plant plants in your backyard, having a nursery or a garden. Good is, is playing pool. or good. You have games. You have good stuff. But good is not getting drunk to the point where you can't stand up. And where you can't be sober enough to make a clear decision. Where you can hurt another person. It won't be getting high on anything. Besides, you know, I mean, in his presence, you don't need to be high on anything. He's, he's more than enough. This is the best high that you would ever have. And anybody who's ever been high, who has had a taste of this, this Father, this Lord, this Savior. You, you know, there's just nothing to compare to him. All highs are abolished in him. <laughs> but to want any of that stuff, you've not tasted and you've not seen this, Lord. This is the this is what Jesus was talking about when he talked about giving the giving the lady at the well, giving her the water where she would thirst no more, and she'd be forever satisfied. Your heart is so satisfied that there's no offense that you've ever had that can keep you 
you know, that can destroy you, that can make you bow your head down and be depressed today. This light of the world has crucified the flesh and its affections and its lust. And it has killed and stomped out depression. Jesus said, I came into the world. To, to, he, he's come into the world to destroy the works of the devil. Depression comes from him. That comes from the evil one. It don't come from God. Whatever rejection we suffered in this life, whatever humiliation we suffered in this life, Jesus got more. <laughs> right on to death. But he took all of those sins and all of these griefs and all of these sorrows and he nailed them to the cross. And he never once gave up on the one who created all things, the Father of heaven and earth. But he dispatched gifts to us. He dispatched the Holy Spirit to us. <laughs> he dispatched God's nature to us so that we could love one another. So that we can love like God loves, see like God sees, do what He says do. He's made all things possible through His body. Jesus made it possible that we can really live a life and be satisfied. Because when you know that you belong to Christ, you're not worried about anything that they can do to us in this world. To be absent from this body to be present with the Lord, we have, we, it's this, you know, it's just going to be really good. But where was I? And washing out our soul and trusting God with this life of ours, and getting out of the the mire and the, the muck and the mire, getting out of this junk that we bogged our minds down with by the God of this world, and coming into the knowledge of God's will for us. Isaiah chapter 11 was talking about the Holy Spirit and how, you see, the Spirit of God, I don't, some people say that each one of these is a spirit working within us to give us, you know, to give us the wisdom that we need, the, the sense that we need, the awareness that we need. But either way, however it is, the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm just going to say that. In verse 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel. See, this is all that we need in us. In this life. This is truly all that we need working in us. We can really trust God. We can say, I don't understand. I've had dreams. I don't, I don't get it. Help me, Lord, have an understanding in dreams. If you're going to give me dreams, then give me the spirit of, like, like you gave me, like you gave Daniel the ability to understand dreams, give me that. So you know what he does? He says here, watch John Paul Jackson, Dreams and Mysteries. <laughs> yep, have me study this. He'll lead you in a right path so that you have understanding of what you're going through. He's not going to do all the work for you. It's us submitting ourselves to him every day. And whatever the situation is, Whatever the problem is, he's going to give you a way to deal with it. That's the right words for that. Okay, so in verse 2, it says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall judge, not judge, after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Now, see, I know that they're talking about Jesus. You know they're talking about Jesus. But we've in, we have an inheritance. We've inherited the nature of God. And this very nature will reign in our hearts as we submit ourselves to God. See, we have, Jesus was tempted in all ways just as we are tempted. And through these temptations, the Spirit was there to give him what he needed while he walked through this earth. Yes, he's the Word. He's the Word that became flesh. <laughs> in, in any case, this is what it is. We need our God. We need our Father 
of heaven and earth. We need our Jesus, our salvation, our Savior, our Messiah. We need the Holy Spirit in us to teach us all things because we cannot do this on our own. We never could. That's why we needed a Savior. We were separated from God in birth. The same day that we were conceived in our mother's womb, we were separated from God. Every person born on the planet is separated from God. When we said yes to him, we signed up for the Holy Spirit to live in us and to teach us all things. We signed up and we got seated in heavenly places with Christ where all the spiritual blessings are. If we want people saved, we got to give them our whole heart. This soul does not belong to you. It belongs to God. And he can do with the souls of this planet anything he wants to. In fact, we already know that he drew the line down the middle. And he said, choose this day whom you will serve, whether you will serve, serve death and destruction or life and goodness. goodness. Choose life, he says. It's an open book test. He says, choose life. I choose life today. I choose to submit my heart, my mind, will, and emotions to God and not let it be in control of how I do today. What I do today. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Or is it? Have we come, on, have we come out of our surrounding walls, our walls of salvation? To go live in a pigsty? Come to the Father. Because His arms are open wide for you today. And know this. That He loves you. And all He wants to do is purify you with His Word. He's going to wash you with the water of the Word. And this, what did Jesus... Jesus coming into this world, what did He do? What did John say? He said that the that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And that is what we need today. So, get your soul out of the filth and bring it into the house of God. Bring it to this word, make it bow down, tell the Lord, look here, I am recommitting my life to you today. I'm not looking out there anymore. If I feel tempted, Lord, please help me not to go in that direction, but to go in the direction of your word. Put a psalm, a hymn, and a spiritual song in my heart, in my mind, so I'll go that way. You are my light and my salvation. You are the strength of my life and all that I will ever need. You are the one who satisfies me. You are the one who is the keeper of my heart, the keeper of my heart and mind. Thank you for giving me perfect peace about this situation, and thank you for giving me strength to resist the evil one so that I can do your will in this earth because you are love and you are my life. And I thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Do that and he will purify you today. Bye-bye.